What's going on, Box Modders? So, if you remember, last week I destroyed a star plat, um, which is this guy right here. And let's see what we did. So, we had a couple of MOSFETs that uh, took a dump. And um, I'm not entirely sure why yet. Uh, the, um, the folks at Star Plat are going to uh, send out a couple more boards. And um, so I'm going to do uh, more extensive testing. And I have some new tricks with the, uh, with the DC electronic load that I think are going to be a little more beneficial to, to the testing. I'm going to show you some of those tricks with uh, with the DNA 40 and uh, I've learned just uh, just in a short period of time learned quite a little bit that I think is going to help um, give uh, shed a lot of light on what uh, what these regulators can do and uh, what I can do with this guy so <clears throat> and it may explain a little bit of what happened to the uh, star plat um, the uh, the company, basically the representatives from the company, are saying that it was uh, it was a defective board. I um, I haven't really engaged them on the uh, protection schemes yet. Uh, I'm in a group chat with them and and Bob, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to try to ask them a few technical questions and see if uh, if uh, we can overcome any any language barrier issues. So that's um, one of the toughest things. In uh, in talking to um, talking to engineers from uh, from who don't speak uh, your language natively uh, or as as their uh, first language is the the tech jargon. Uh, the tech jargon doesn't translate directly, um, and so that's the biggest challenge. Anyway, what do we have here? We have our test set up. Uh, I have this actually fully paralleled with the uh, 510 box so if I want to hook up, if I want to just uh, disengage the DC load and hook up a, a coil at any point I can do that. I don't think I'm going to do that for this video but it uh, gives me that freedom and, um, and it's something I'll probably keep doing uh, as I go on. And um, one little trick that I've been doing with uh, to join three wires, to solder three wires, uh, is I wrap, uh, I basically bundle them with uh, resistance wire because uh, canthal and nichrome don't solder readily. So you can uh, you can bundle it any way you want, solder the shit out of the wires, and then pull the uh, you can pull the canthal off later if you want to. So uh, in case you guys haven't tried that yet, that's uh, been working for me. So. Uh, what we have is constant resistance mode. Um, I just want to show you this real quickly. Uh, I'm going to stop using constant resistance mode for um, at least for lower uh, resistances because the um, it doesn't it doesn't work well. And I think the star plat was a very good example of it not working well. Um, and the DNA40 is somewhat an example. So the DNA40 officially won't go down below. This is the minimum resistance is 0.16 on uh, non-temp builds and 0.1 on uh, temp builds. So it should run a 0.35 is the point. And I, so I'm going to hit it. Oh wait, I have to actually turn it on. There we go. I hit it. And it's going to start. I mean, then we're going to get the shorted message. And you can well, probably, I think the mic's going to pick it up is a little bit of an electronic whine, which is the, uh, as far as I can tell, the um, inductor destabilizing, or the basically the electronic switching breaking down, and um, and it detects that as a, as an atomizer short, which is good. That's good. Uh, that's good engineering. So, uh, what uh, what Mamu mentioned, uh, she said she'd ask someone that uh, basically the the because this isn't just like this is just a box of resistors that that are switched, you know, switched on and off. This is uh, something a little more complex. So, um, since that's a type of regulator, and this is a type of regulator, they uh, putting it in constant resistance mode, they could actually try to chase each other. 
and uh, you know, it creates a, a feedback loop that um, is going to be more detrimental to this guy than than this guy. And um, so the solution is to set it to, I'm not going to set it to 16 amps quite yet. I'm going to do a 10 amps now. Um, the, um, the limit on the DNA 40 on the spec sheet is 16 amps. So we'll go up to 16 amps. We'll actually go higher than 16 amps and see what happens. I haven't gone above 16 amps, but that was what, uh, that was kind of the purpose of this video was to, um, wants to go beyond the limits. Oh, uh, before I do that, let me show you, let's go up to something that'll work. Um, so one thing the Sarplat wouldn't do was it wouldn't capture, it wouldn't allow the um, a DC load to operate in constant resistance mode um, reliably. And so it says on reg. That basically means that it has no input from the, the uh, source to give it a, um, a reliable resistance. Because like I said, this isn't just like a box of resistors. Uh, it establishes that resistance based on the source. So when I hit it, it goes to CR. That means we're good to go. And, um, and it's running pretty reliably. Uh, we have uh, 0.49, we're reading 0.5, that's, that's close enough. Um, 4.47 volts output, 4.3 actually gets to it, that's from uh, line losses, which is which is perfectly acceptable. So um, and it timed out there. So we got 36 watts actually uh, making it to the load, which is fine. Um, you're not going to have losses quite that great in um, in a mod. You you might, but uh, there's a little more wiring to this than there is in a mod. So that's fine. Uh, that's the point. But um, <clears throat> so like higher higher resistances, that's fine. But as you see, you get lower. You get much below 0.4, and the thing doesn't work. And it's not—it's um, not a limitation of the board necessarily. Not—not not in the sense that it can't uh, drive a 0.35 load, which it can. And I'm going to show you that now. So we just go current, um, and once you set a current, once you set a, a value on this thing, then it goes into that mode. Which is uh, which is fantastic. So we're in current, we're in constant current mode. So I just pick it up, and now we're running at. Uh, it says it's a there's a 0.36 load right there, and it's running at a constant 10 amps, and it's going to vary. We have the uh, the voltage varied there, um, and basically it's uh, it's going to vary your resistance. It's going to vary its load. Uh, to to match that, and we got a timeout. Um, and you're going to know when this thing is getting hot because the uh, screen is held onto the inductor with uh, hot glue. So uh, that's the uh, I had fun with that earlier. Um, I got right when I got the uh, the too hot um, right when I got the too hot message, the uh, the screen fell off of the uh, inductor. So let's see if we can do that again because I thought that was that was amusing. Um, so let's go straight up, let's go right into uh, 16 amps, because that is the, I think it's 16 or 16.5, uh, I'll double check, we're going to go above uh, in both of those in a minute anyway. So 16 amps, uh, 0.13 load, it'll run it, a um, little more on the line loss because we have a higher current. Uh, the more current we have in the line, the more voltage is going to be lost, which is why by the way, uh, we transmit voltage for um, utilities at the highest voltage possible uh, or reasonable, so we have the uh, fewest line losses. Um, the more you know, insert rainbow uh, JPEG here. So let's go. We see that it, we see that it runs it. Um, we're just gonna. I'm just gonna keep. We go to 17. Oops, 17. Uh, this thing's pretty uh, pretty dummy proof, by the way, um, and it's fairly intuitive. Uh, I, had, I had been using it for a while before I even looked at the manual, and the manual really, it gives you a lot of good information, uh, especially if you're going to use this thing for more complex tests, but like basic, constant, like one constant uh, quantity, constant voltage, or constant current, or constant resistance, um, <clears throat> the, it, it just works. 
So, which is great for especially for the fucking amount of money that uh, that it cost that you guys uh, fronted me for it, which I greatly appreciate. Anyway, um, so that's a point one, and now we're actually reducing the. Uh, we're getting it. We're in ohms too low, so it's reducing the output, and this is what it's designed to do. Um, it's doing exactly what the data sheet says it does. Uh, which is another issue I had with the Starplat datasheet is um, the Starplat datasheet doesn't talk about little behavioral things like that. Uh, well, it does talk about a, a temperature shutdown. Um, but if that's the only protection it has, then it, and, and if it doesn't uh, catch an issue, then that board is susceptible to damage. But that, that's all speculation uh, as of now. I have to ask those questions. So... Um, so let's go to, uh, 18, because I want to, I want to kind of walk it up a little bit and see if we just can get, so now we're reading point, uh, yeah, but it reads it as a point oh four load. Um, it's reading the load. It's not, uh, it's not refusing to run it. It's just, uh giving me an ohms too low. Uh, so, and you see it's trying to reduce, you see over here, it's trying to reduce the uh, the current down to something that it can uh, handle, and that's that's the board, uh, the board doing that. So, so it's, it's uh, supplying 13.2 watts, and we have about 8 watts getting to the thing. And now we have our too hot. And, um, Yeah, see our, it, it didn't fall off this time, but it's, uh, you see it's completely, that's the hot glue being, uh, being liquid there. Um, that's exactly what that is. So, uh, it runs it. Uh, I'm running this thing to its max, and it's just, uh, it's just doing it. So, um, and it gave me the too hot message. I'll do it again, I'll show you. Ohm's too low, which means it's going to reduce its output. Uh, and I'm just going to I'm just going to hold it down. We don't have any uh, inductor uh, screaming or any issues like that. Uh, no like audible issues. So I'm really looking forward to getting another star plat and um, and testing it out. And I'm going to make it do uh, a too hot message again. There you go, too hot. So. Um, I mean, I probably could do this over and over and over again and maybe make it fail, but it's uh, it's doing everything that it should be doing as far as letting you know, uh, hey, hey, guy, um, you're you're running you're running me wrong. So, uh, and that was like a point oh four, yeah, that's, and it it retains that uh, that last reading, point oh four ohms, which is uh, beyond the spec sheet. Um, it, it runs it, but obviously it's not going to run it within the uh, limits uh, are in within the normal operating parameters of the board, so you set it to 40 watts, it's not going to run it at 40 watts. Um, that's, uh, so that's kind of it for the DNA 40. Um, so that's, uh, that's tying it back into the star plat. Um, I don't, I still don't know why the star plat failed. That's the big thing, and I really think it's because it doesn't have it doesn't have an overcurrent protection on it, um, or anything telling it, uh, "Hey, you're you're running too hard." Um, <clears throat> but I can't um, I can't reproduce that exact issue with the DNA forty because it just it just plays it just plays better with the uh, electronic load. Even when I put it on a, uh, a stupid, like I put it on point one, and it just isn't going to run. It just say check atomizer because it sees it as a sees it as a short. Um, oh, I have to. I'm an idiot. It says check atomizer because it's not on. So it's going to try, but it's going to keep saying short. You can hear it try, um, and. Uh, 
makes me wonder to some extent, and it's actually kind of pissing off my, uh, yeah, I was pissing off my DC load, too. So, um, anyway, is it uh, one of the fans? It sounds like one of the fans came on. So, anyway, um, once I get more star plat boards, I will test them more thoroughly and give you a better idea of what to expect. That should give us all a better idea of what to expect of a star plat. And uh, I'm going to test the DNA 75 probably uh, this weekend as well, though I, I think I'm going to space out the uh, release of the videos. Um, that way I can, if I come across a weekend when I can't make a video, uh, I can keep putting out content to you guys regularly. Um, and not this, like, huge splash of here's a bunch of shit and then nothing for a while. So, we'll see. Um, I think that's, uh, so, so that's the deal. Uh, what I do know is uh, the DC electronic load works better with these regulators on um, constant current mode. I'm going to do some more research as to exactly why. And uh, <clears throat> then, uh, so the star plat, we know, uh, it, so that's the issue with the star plat is it's not the resistance reading that is the issue. Uh, it is the whatever whatever signal uh, it, it outputs was not something that the DC load was um, compatible with. And, um, but we still have the issue of why wasn't the signal compatible? Um, will it be compatible in uh, constant current mode? And uh, am I going to kill this thing again uh, putting it, just putting a shitload of current through it? Um, so these are all questions that uh, I, I think are going to be honestly better answered by by experimentation than anything else. But I'm still gonna I'm still gonna ask the folks for uh, for answers. Uh, I, the reason I didn't use the oscilloscope or anything on here is you can see all that stuff in my DNA40 versus uh, SX350 shootout video. Um, it's all there, and uh, I may do. I don't think I'll do any more shootout videos. Uh, I'll probably just unless there are two completely new boards that, that people are really saying, uh, like arguing about, but I think I'm just going to add board videos as we go. Um, so, uh, yeah, um, people start with thumbs up to everybody for their input. Um, group members read the pinned post, uh, like, share, uh, comment below, uh, haters, suck a fatty, I'm out.